In today's tutorial, we will discuss a very recent publication which claims that Brett's rule has been disproven. The publication um, came out in uh, September 2024 in Science. Neil Garg at the UCLA has uh, published it. Uh, very interesting findings, but first of all, what is Brett's rule all about? So, no double bond at bridgehead of small bicyclic systems. And the best example for such an anti-Brett molecule would be one norbornin here with a double bond at bridgehead position. And until recently, before this publication came out, uh, it was not generally accepted to write down a double bond here, but it was uh, more seen as some kind of di-radical because of the geometric constraints we, we need for a classical CC double bond, we need two p orbitals in close proximity to each other, in line to each other, that they can overlap with one electron in each orbital, forming then a molecular orbital. So, um, for this molecule, I have drawn a Newman projection and discussed that already in a preceding video. The link is uh, down below. And um, well, here we have this kind of projection. One carbon, one carbon, Newman projection. Here this blue cycle, the second blue cycle for the second carbon atom with the two hydrogens here. And the hydrogen at this position should be in the projection in line with that carbon, that carbon and that hydrogen. Since this center should be as a secondary radical sp2 hybridized, that means that the radicalic electron should be in the remaining p orbital here introduced, and uh, a tertiary radical like that one normally is also seen as an sp2 hybridized center. However, this carbon is incorporated in the small ring system here and cannot be located in plane with those three carbons. It is pyramidalized and therefore sp3 hybridized. Well, then this electron should be in an sp3 hybrid orbital and this is drawn here with that red dotted line. The larger part and the smaller part of that orbital is behind that carbon. As you see that this orbital and the other one behind are orthogonal to each other and they just don't overlap. So, we have a radical, sen a radical here and a radical there. Well, in that publication, then Ken Hoke, a, a very famous theoretical chemist, made some calculation and he found out that due to his in accordance to his calculations, this should be a somewhat twisted center here. The hydrogen is far more below and that means also here we have an sp3 hybridized center. We should introduce an sp3 hybrid orbital with one electron and here we have the other sp3 orbital like this one with the other electron and uh, while they can slightly overlap 
and indeed this is a singlet state as has been found out by the calculation and also by the experiments. So let us have a look to the experiments. Here most interestingly at um, somewhat modified starting material not with a CH2 bridge but with this ethane diol bridge. We start with a molecule here a bromine at the bridgehead position here a TMS group and it is known for quite a while that you can make an elimination reaction by offering fluoride. This will introduce the elimination reaction and now it was the question do we have a double bond here or is it more a radical? And this is indeed a very clever setup because this chiral molecule was um, used with more than 95% enantiomeric excess in that case. And if it would result in that olefin, the olefin with this twisted CH bond here should be chiral, whereas that diradical with their orbitals orthogonal to each other would be achiral. Well, either this one or that one, they have of course the correct character of uh, very reactive intermediates. You can't put those molecules into bottles and hope for the best. No. If you generate those, you should have a reagent already present to trap this these intermediates, reactive intermediates, and atrazine is such a trapping agent for a diels alder reaction. And indeed, they isolated the diels alder product and found out they could isolate that with 90% enantiomeric excess. That means the chiral information also remained within the reactive intermediate and therefore it is clear that uh, this is the correct structure having a double bond here at the bridgehead. So, <clears throat> a similar situation is already known from Dihydrobenzene, the arines. Here we have either a double bond or even in the cumulin system or um, the other mesomeric structure with uh, um, the, the, the other double bond here making overall a triple bond here. Well, I, I should just uh, all that. This one. So, how is that additional bond interpreted? Well, we have two sp2 hybridized centers and this means we have here an sp2 orbital and here another one well, they are quite far away from each other, but we still have a slight overlap. And this is also a singlet system, as has been found out. And this can also be generated essentially by the same method. There are lots of other methods to generate such a dihydrobenzene. And this can also be trapped with anthracene, forming the famous molecule tryptocene. So, and also this is of course a highly, highly reactive species. So, 
Let us go back to Brett's rule. Is Brett's rule disproved? Well, yes, if you take Brett's rule literally. But, well, if you make a little abbreviation, well, just adding no stable molecule with double bond at bridgehead of small bicyclic systems, then you have a modified bread rule that uh, still remains valid. Thanks for listening.